Here in Arizona, venomous snakes and people share living space. When the fastest growing urban area in the country and the region with the highest density of rattlesnake species are the same place, things get interesting. But this situation is of course not unique to Arizona or even the United States. Throughout the world, venomous snakes and people have complex and unique relationships. In comparison, India. Just like here in Arizona, development and wild areas intertwine. But unlike the fewer than five deaths each year here in the United States, the death toll in India can be well over 100,000 with many more unreported. I got a chance to go to India with my good friends to meet up with basically the Indian versions of ourselves to not only find these snakes in the wild, but run some snake relocation calls and see how this situation compares to our own back home in Arizona. And of course, we're hoping to find a big one, a king cobra. So let's get to it. I've been traveling for three days. I'm tired. But I am in India now, so I'm gonna go sleep for a while. Wait for my friends to get here, and then uh, it's time to find a cobra. So here I am. First thing I did was, after a bunch of sleep, walk around a bit to take it all in. One of the things that I read about a first time visit to India is that it's a sensory overload of colors, odors, and eventually tastes that characteristically overwhelm. That was accurate. And what I won't be doing is making the mistake that a lot of traveling Americans make to judge a place along a vertical sliding scale of comparison to the average HOA community back home. Every country I visited has challenges and beauties and cultural complexity that defy such narrow context. So we're gonna skip all of that. And I've already gone out and found some cool amphibians, found uh, one snake species just here in the middle of the city, and we're about to get into some taxis to go out of town and go look for some cobras. So I found this little area that was just a walkway along a drainage that was just a few kilometers from our hotel, very much in town, and didn't look like great habitat, but this is kind of where I wanted to see a spectacle cobra, right, in this conflict, right, where somebody riding their motorcycle by on the freeway could run into a cobra. It feels a little bit like home, so interesting. And a few minutes later, we actually found one. This little spectacle cobra came out on the trail in front of us and stopped and became defensive and did that cobra thing. This is the equivalent of a rattlesnake curling up and shaking its tail to try to scare us away. And as we were hoping to see, this thing was right in the middle of town. I mean, there were people around. It was right next to a busy road. We were not very far from our hotel. We were not even getting started, but here's a cobra right in front of us. Small guy, maybe foot long, but seemed to know that if he were to bite us, we would be in big trouble. So right away, we were able to find one of India's big four. And I should probably explain what the big four is. As I mentioned earlier in the US, death by venomous snakes in modern times is incredibly rare. It happens, but maybe only once or twice a year. You can attribute much of that to easily accessible polyvalent antivenom and universal emergency response. So despite the cultural insistence on the contrary, venomous snakes in America really aren't that big of a deal. But India, that's another story. According to the World Health Organization, venomous snakes kill up to 138,000 people a year on top of hundreds of thousands of amputations and disabling injuries. Around 90% of these fatal bites are caused by a group known as the Big Four, common and ubiquitous species that, like our Western diamondbacks, thrive in the transition between modern life and imperiled wilderness. If judged by the deaths that they cause, these are among the most deadly snakes on the planet. And we just found one right in town, walking distance from the hotel. So with the cobra off the list, we're left to find the other three, the common crate, the saw-scaled viper, and the Russell's viper.
Is he crossing? He was right here. Was he an ambush? Sean, do you remember lemon heads? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. They make one now called lemon head and friends, and they're chewy. Next, we traveled a few hours to meet up with a snake relocation team that does this work in the urban area, very similar in some ways to what we do back home. It's not legal for us to handle the snakes, so we're there just to accompany and observe and learn everything we can. And it took no time at all for a call to come in. A small snake inside of a house, maybe a cobra. We're all run to the cars and are on the way. Now for anybody that watches our channel, this part, even though it's on the other side of the planet, is gonna feel pretty familiar. Start. And what was probably a young Indian rat snake had disappeared by the time we got there. But we set into what usually comes next in these kinds of situations, which is to continue searching the house top to bottom to make sure there isn't any snake there in more a matter of providing peace of mind to the homeowners than actually expecting to find something. And when we were doing that and seeing the looks on the faces of the people that lived there, even though I couldn't understand what they were saying, I felt instantly like I was back home doing the same thing with a baby coach whip or a long nose snake or gopher snake or something like that, where the task is no longer to actually catch a snake, but to inform the homeowners how it got in so they can make some changes and avoid the next one. I think if it went, it, you know, it could easily get into that thing under the house. Mm -hmm. oh, there's open bricks and all that stuff there. Yeah, this goes outside. Yeah. That goes into the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what it did. I'm sure. But then another call came in, so we all rushed out of there, got in our cars, and it was off to the next one. Hey guys. Hey. You see it? We're gonna be digging for gold. We call this spicy Jenga back home. Still not sure exactly what it is. The guys that were demoing this wall think it's a cobra and it disappeared into all this rubble. So we gotta dig through it to get it out. And then immediately onto the next one, a much larger snake seen in a factory. Good. 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 Good.
That's a big one, that's a big one. Whoa, nice. Nice. He's been living a royal life here. That is a nice rat. Yeah. Get up. Make it, yeah? Good night. Beautiful. What percentage of calls that you do are these? Forty percent cobra. Okay. It's not right. Cool. Like takes the role of uh, gopher snakes for us. I think Manu just got another call. All right. And just like that, we are off to another call, another snake in a house. They don't know if it's a cobra or a rat snake or what. They're freaking out. It sounds very familiar and very similar to what we're dealing with back home in a typical day. This is the spot. Yeah, get that off. Spider webs and shit. Another wrap. Juvenile rat. Juvenile rat. Uh -huh. Cool. Beauty. And that was it for the removal calls. No cobras, either king or otherwise, but I really saw what I was hoping to see, which was the interaction between people just living and doing their thing alongside an abundance of snakes. I was surprised, and maybe I shouldn't be, at just how familiar it felt. Obviously, very different snakes in a very different setting, but how people reacted, their faces, their body language, and just how very much the job of entering the situation and resolving human-wildlife conflict like this, I felt very much at home and wish we had more time to spend with our new friends doing basically the same job that we do on the other side of the world. But it was time to get to other things, and now we get back to looking for the remaining three of India's big four. Russells. Feels a lot snakier tonight. Yeah, it's snake. The thing about the Russell's Viper that makes it so dangerous isn't just the animal itself. I mean, there's a lot of dangerously venomous snakes in the world, but this one can be about anywhere. It makes itself at home in agriculture where people live and work, often without shoes. So we tried a new area where the disturbed secondary forest might make it easier to find what we're looking for. And we didn't have to wait for long. Yeah! Oh! And here it is, the second on our list of India's big four, the Russell's Viper. It is a really common snake. It's kind of the equivalent of somebody coming to the U.S. and seeing a Western Diamondback and being really excited about it. But for us, we've only seen these in books since we were kids, and here it is right in front of us. That is never not going to be incredibly exciting, so we're all really happy. And as a bonus on the way out, this cute little star tortoise.
Hey! Yo! Guys, come on!